Uh, welcome everybody to the uh well what's this now the ninth uh we call them lectures on the numbers inspired by soul waves insertions uh but they're actually really just explorations of the numbers uh, i'm joined with uh by siri in norway and actually a new guest uh suzanne elston uh, canada is that right mm -hmm. and, and suzanne was very vociferous in the chat room on the last um on, on the last uh broadcast mm -hmm. and so just uh out of the blue i said come on board you know don't be silent talk so i know you're, you're like a you're a good chatter you've got lots of knowledge lots of uh lots of wisdom uh, i'll just pop your name up there as well so that's your your website wild old, old woman uh, ca but I, I said less of the old if you know what i mean so suzanne just tell us a little bit about yourself for people that don't know you i spent most of my professional career as an environmental advocate journalist uh policy person um and the environment kind of went out of vogue <laughs> about five years ago so i was downsized and started teaching college teaching communications in a whole different venue but at the same time i discovered the insight timer tom's work and through tom siri um and so i'm giving myself the opportunity to explore me for a change um always keeping in mind my ecological self um i'm mentoring now younger generations of environmental leaders so working with a bunch of um young people who are working on climate change issues and working on wetland preservation. So it's it's lovely to have the freedom for the first time in my life to do everything I want to do. I have three adult children and recently found that I also have a stepson. So wow. um, yeah, very exciting. Yeah, exciting time to be alive. Fantastic stuff. And um, I'm very glad to be here. Thank you. Oh, great. I mean, uh, it's, uh, Louisa, by the way, sends her, uh, her, her apologies. She'll be back hopefully for uh, uh, lecture number 10. Uh, so let's let's talk about the number nine then, which is kind of interesting. So the context of the nine for me, when uh, I wrote the ninth um, chapter of insertions, that was the first majorly channeled one. I wasn't expecting it. And this um, guide, counselor number nine, Noma, came through. Uh, Noma kind of hangs out with the with the whales and stuff like that. And a whole message just came through. It's a kind of weird thing to do. Uh, I don't do pure channeling, passive channeling a lot, but I tend to do what they call active channeling where I'm in the loop. But this was a pure, pure channeled message. So um, the insertions ambient track Noma is out on Soundwise at the moment. And that's a communication between <laughs> Uh, me musically and some dolphins and some whales uh, there's a lovely uh, guided track which i recorded the other day that's going to be live on the full moon uh, called the cycle of nines where i go into a little bit of the numerology of nine which is great but what what do you know about the number nine uh, suzanne what's it what's it mean to you well the first time i really started becoming aware of it actually thomas thanks to you when you add up your year of birth date of birth month of birth and you uh -huh. keep adding them until you get a single number my number is nine Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, so very much aware of uh, the synergy of that. And I was just made mindful this morning that tomorrow, the 9th of the 9th, is my grandson's ninth birthday. So there's, wow. to me, 9 is about synergy and about connection and mm -hmm. about touching where you came from and where you're going. That's interesting. So yeah. for my number is 33, which adds to 6, which is a 9 upside down, which is kind of interesting, as well, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> which three times three is also nine it is indeed yeah so everything kind of resolves into nine which is interesting i love that magical uh nature of the number nine when you add digits of nine together so you add uh nine and nine you get 18 and the one and eight equals nine and if you go to nine 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 you can do this with kids but it's a great exercise for, for kids you can say uh any number of nines added together if you sum them together so nine 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 uh, 999 will be 27 and the two and seven add up to nine as well yeah love all that Fascinating. so uh, <clears throat> Siri, how about you what's, what's the nine mean for you nine is first of all the month we're in now which is uh, in a kind of my favorite month where everything changes and the equinox uh, arrives and we are allowed to reboot and restart and repurpose and start a new way of dealing with the loss of light up here where we live, obviously. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also uh, love the nine dimensional thinking and also your book insertions and Noma and whales and whales and dolphins have been around me uh, without being visible all my life. I've been drawing dolphins without knowing about the number nine and their connection. Mm -hmm. And also 
uh, the magic of the I don't know the uh, English word right now, but when it's uh, one times nine is nine, and then the whole table of those uh, equations, um, uh, when you go from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then it turns the, the way the children learn to, to count in That's school. Right. What do you call that? Well, <laughs> it's yeah, time table. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 If you write numbers one to nine down vertically and then yes. write the numbers nine to one down yeah. vertically, yeah. Zero, yeah. everything adds up to nine. Yeah, that's right? yeah. childish. But uh, also uh, a more scientifically approach to it is all about Nikola Tesla and the energy. And nine is energy and, and nine energy <laughs> and mm -hmm. wordplay. And also in Norwegian, nine is knee. So, Tom, knee uh -huh. and nine. <laughs> the knee energy we were yeah. just talking before the broadcast i've got a little knee procedure going on yeah uh, yeah in, and speaking in, of insertions yeah speaking yeah, about and, insertions, and yeah. the same procedure so can uh, yeah yeah absolutely yeah. speaking about your book insertions is uh where i uh for the first real time got in contact with my connection with the nine and the noma working through me when i paint so that's mm -hmm. all about energy and all the nine dimensions when mm. I am in the for place of no thought, that's mm. when I'm in number nine. I think I can tell that. that. Yeah. Mm. And did you ever hit, listen to that meditation I did called "Being Nine Nine Nine? That's on mm. Insight. I love that. And that's that. That's the lovely. That, the idea is that we're moving to the nine 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 energy, which is the cryon yeah. energy, the cryon school energy. Yeah. I keep seeing them these days. Nine and, and nine. And you will. Yeah, you, you will. It's it's coming up a lot at the moment. Interesting. And we've we. We've been working on a new project, aren't we, Siri? To do mm -hmm. a, a new arcana. And yeah, indeed. That, that drives the that that numerology drives that as well. So uh, mm. we, some time ago, you you did some lovely imagery for the major arcana, and we've been trying to we've been thinking about doing this for a long time, but it's actually starting next week, isn't it? On yes. on the Soul Waves group and also on Twitter, each day for the next sixty days. We'll be doing uh, an arc one of the minor arcana, starting with the the suite of, of fire, effectively, mm -hmm. and then ending up on the suite of the earth. And what the reason it's sixty days, not fifty six, for any of the that know the uh, tarot, is we're doing fifteen arcana per suite, not mm -hmm. thirty. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is the tarot isn't fixed. It's something that, uh, or owned for that matter. So uh, it's something which is baton carried. So someone picks it up and then carries it and creates something new. I remember when I saw the Osho Zen deck, I was really encouraged to see he had, he had um, 23 major arcana, not 22. And he had a master card, which is great. So in our arcana, major arcana, we have that as well. But the suite is going to be a uh, 15, which puts eight in the middle, which is kind of interesting. And in numerology, in the... In, in numerology, nine has got this idea of of completion, but not finality. Yeah, I, I mean that, that that that's what resonates for me too. The idea of beginning yeah. and end. Um, yeah, yeah. The uh, and, and this is what something Tom um, I commented offline, and you said to bring it up today. Um, the breath meditation that you did, which was mm. so lovely on Inside Timer. Um, I got halfway through it, and I I had a panic attack. Wow! I have to the stop. Aleph, the Aleph breath. Yeah. 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 Um, because you know we 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 know that we are breath. We know mm -hmm. that all we have is breath. Um, but when you suddenly realize that you breathe in, you breathe out, and that's it. And if somewhere that 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 space in the, in the middle that you always talk about, you know, you breathe in and, and that little gap in the middle, mm -hmm. that's infinity right there. And the idea that we have such a fragile grasp on this life um, and the idea of infinity that suddenly we think of ourselves as a crown of creation, but we are just the next step. And this, this connects very much with your book, the Soul Waves book, the idea that eventually we leave. And there is a whole heck of a lot of people that get left behind. And mm -hmm. in, in that case, it's it's a global gasp there. But just the idea that we really need to, it resonates with me, maybe it's because I'm of a certain age. But the idea that we have this incredible, gossamer, thin, tenuous grasp 
on the magnificence that is life and this planet. And I, that's just really hammered home to me, the idea of fall and the changing of the seasons. And we always assume that we'll be here as part of the story um, in this, you know, this very physical plane. So it just, it really made me stop. And the, the joy of breathing in and breathing out suddenly had a whole different significance to me, particularly again in COVID, where people don't realize that this is all about breath, you know, regardless mm. of your feelings about um, the pandemic or the, everything that's going on. But at the core of it, it's about our ability to breathe and to let others breathe. Yeah. So. Well, the whole planet breathes because we breathe in uh, oxygen and CO two out, and then the plant life takes CO two in and rebreathes oxygen. I love yeah. also the notion that as the um, you know, uh, the idea that all mammals, I believe, have the same number of breaths in their lifetime, assuming that they they get to their natural course, uh, right. and so uh, and and so tortoises and elephants are about the same, and tortoises breathe slower, but um, seem to live longer. Uh, and we're about we're about the same. Uh, and also the Earth breathes as the Moon goes round the Earth. The the surface of the Earth goes up and down. And yes. uh, they reckon the Earth's been around for four billion years, and we're around for another four billion years. And I did a calculation because I'm a nerd, and it looks like the Moon rotations around the Earth are the same number of breaths that we might have in our lifetime. Oh. Yeah. It just on me now too. The other big significance of the number nine yeah. is humans gestate for nine months. Yes, of course. Creation is nine months. Yeah, yeah. And I, I've always, uh, when I was writing my books, they seem to take nine months as well. And I even, I even have um, pains uh, when they the, the pains, birth pains, as they came out as well, which is kind of weird. <laughs> but mm -hmm. yeah, nine, nine. I think is a, is is just an amazing, it's just an amazing number. And what came through in the channeling was that um, we're taught to count up to nine. But actually, it's the other way around. That the number nine is is um, is like not better than or bigger than all the other numbers, but it's um, it's part of the it's part of the sequence. And you can imagine the other numbers beneath it holding it up as a number. If you know what I mean, so that they it's suspended. It holds the other numbers up, and also it's 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 propped up by the other numbers too. That's a bit of an mm -hmm. esoteric kind of concept, but I love the um, the shape as well. It's just a great shape, isn't it? Little curve, mm -hmm. little comma. Actually, it's like a comma where you just pause, and when yeah. when you when you do a comma is when you breathe, isn't it? Yeah. So Plus, I know when I'm, yeah. month of September yeah. is the harvest time for this part yeah. of the world. Yeah. It's the ninth yeah. month. So to yeah. further that analogy, the the winter, the spring, the summer, they hold up the harvest. They hold yeah. up the number. Mm. And what happens when you? If you were just to meditate on the number nine, in its, in its, uh, as an essence, what would come up for you? What thoughts come up when you look at number nine? It's the beginning of a spiral for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's it whirls out, and like you say, energy and everything. Everything evolves around the nine, actually. Yeah. And actually, yeah. to me, what just came up then when I, I did the same was it was one half of a galaxy, a spiral galaxy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I had two nines together and flip one on its head, so you got a six and a nine, and effectively you've got, you got a whole galaxy, haven't you? And there's also the symbol of the Pisces in the horoscopes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also it's then got, imagine the six and a nine together is very yin-yang. And did you know the brain has actually got a bit of yin-yang to it as well? If you look at the brain from above, mm -hmm. I don't know if I've got the right term for this. It's called Yakalevian torque. And the brain slightly twisted. So our, front, our frontal lobe on the left slightly goes in front of the right hemisphere. And the back lobe of uh, the right goes slightly behind the left hemisphere so mm -hmm. even our brains have got this sort of yin yang aspect to them and the idea that you know the left brain that that model of the brain was the left brain is logical right brain is crazy which is a bit of an urban myth it's more like the left brain sees detail and the right brain sees the big picture and when you get the detail and the big picture together at the same time kind of something happens 
I guess so to no further yeah. a serious comment about the number nine being a spiral, it's also the, the birth of the Nautilus and the Fibonacci sequence, right? It's just this mm -hmm. the start here and then it just keeps going and going and going and going and going, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a, si a six is like an inverted comma at the start of a sentence and a nine at the end of a sentence. Yeah. Yeah, so you take a breath in and then you speak the sentence on the out breath. And then if you need it's a long if it's a long sentence, you need to pause it. So you put a little comma in, which is a nine, and then you say the rest of the sentence. And I use the the, the audiobook production as my proofreading uh, X. That's how I proofread my books. And if I find I'm having to take a breath in the middle of a sentence, it means I haven't got punctuation in the right place, which is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That's very interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We when we uh, when we when we when we uh, speak as opposed to when we write, it's a very very different experience. But I think our because of social media, because we be, become so acutely attuned to sound bites, I think that's increasingly important to um, when we create to create within a context that can be understood so it's one thing to have great ideas but if you can't articulate them in such a way that people can grasp them, i think that's one of the things that's so lovely about your work tom it's just so easy to listen to um and there's there's others i mean they do, they do great work but you just kind of nod off because our minds are not our attention span put it that way <laughs> our mm -hmm. attention span is becoming increasingly decreased if that makes any sense it does and um it's kind of what's interesting about this work is and thank you for that um those kind words Suzanne, is that i i'm actually very unstudied in this area so i haven't studied uh, numerology i uh, just uh, whatever the numbers say to me seems to come through and i didn't have any <coughs> idea other than we just do 12 of these conversations and i did 12 i did 12 chapters in the book there's 12 tracks being produced ambient tracks produced and 12 meditations being produced um i've even got a uh look at that i've even got a dodecahedron uh on my uh, on my desktop and the reason for that is i'm writing the duodex at the moment the duodex is is telegraphed at the end of insertion 12 and i'm writing the whole book of the duodex and on the on a dodecahedral die you'll see that all the opposite sides add up to 13. So you've got 2 and 11, uh, 3 and 10, 4 and 9. Everything adds up to 13, which is kind of interesting. So one thing that's occurred to me in the middle of this process is that we will do a 13th lecture. We'll do a 13th track. And yeah. 13th. We'll look at the number 13. Obviously, the number 12 is driven by the 12 councillors of the light, if you like, and the number 12 is all over our mythology, if you like. So uh, do a 12 months and all that kind of stuff. Um, but what's kind of interesting is um, ages ago, I got introduced to the nine logical levels of being. And to, and I was in, I was introduced to the fact there's there's actually a level 10, 11, 11, a level 11, a level 12, and a level 13. So when I was recording the meditation, um, the guided meditation for this month, which is coming out on the full moon, as I mentioned, the cycle of nines, it occurred to me then in, that actually the next meditations would be taking people to the next levels and i've never done that before now the implication is and i, I will have to i have to share this uh, with no ego or whatever is that i'm already operating at level 13 and that part of the journey is to help as many people as possible to get up to level 13 as well hmm. that's great great to know yeah, that's coming, and that's that's it's a, it's a massive thing, and you know what? This is you can't write you can't write these life stories. My knee has always hurt when I take the biggest steps forward, and before I take people to level ten, my knee is being fixed. Hmm. I've not been ready to go this far, literally before. Hmm. Isn't that amazing? I've never gone this far. So would you say, just a thought that comes in, would you say that people that have knee problems or knee issues or injuries or whatever, 
Are they struggling with leveling up on some level? Could be, yeah, yeah. So you know, people have back problems, don't they? Shoulder problems, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm working as so a Mary Mary Zanuto, um, who I've met, and I've been uh, helping get her get some of her meditations on the onto Insight Timer. Is actually creating a whole program now called the Vessel for Your Soul, mm -hmm. and it's all about how we we our body and in our our physiology is in its best state, so it can take our soul on the best journey through life and obviously as part of that she's she's taking uh, on board some of the issues that we have so the first track is called walking well mm -hmm. and uh, she wrote that after she saw me hobbling around my garden saying <laughs> yeah you need to walk a bit better uh, mm -hmm. uh what have you so that that this is kind of interesting that these these things all these things are converging at the same time and i i need to go go back and look at what the nine logical levels are uh, i've got it, got it written down somewhere but basically most of humanity is still working at level six and and some of humanity is working at level four, uh, especially the ones that are are in fear. So anyone that's mm. working from a fearful position, I'm not going to say what that is on this broadcast because things are getting chopped out of YouTube and all sorts of things at the moment. But they know who they are. You know who they are. So most of humanity is actually a pretty good stage, level six, uh, where they're kind of waking up to the fact that we don't have to do things like we used to anymore. People, a lot of people are at level seven, level eight level uh, uh nine at level nine you're basically working as a as a as a a wizard or a witch or a sorcerer or a sorceress on the earth plane and then the levels above that you just do you add some more uh, go faster stripes to the way you you work and you know what i don't even know what these are i can't remember what they are but they'll come back to me when i do the meditations hmm. so tom you mentioned the the fact that a lot of um a lot of humanity is operating on level four. <laughs> um, yeah. I had a, I had a thought this morning that that we have this um, responsibility to disconnect ourselves from ourselves and reconnect mm -hmm. with the planet. Mm -hmm. The you know what we do as humans is is unconscionable and unimaginable if you simply think about your connection to the planet again back to the breath. Um, your connection to the planet and how we are part of a cl very closed system with very, very, very thin atmosphere. I mean, this is a miracle, just being here, just mm -hmm. breathing, just having this symbiotic relationship with every other living thing on the planet and having Mother Gaia breathe with us. And if you, I mean, literally the, the atmosphere, we assume that, you know, we lie on our back and we look up at the stars, it goes on forever, but it's, it's just this very thin gossamer mm -hmm. level. And we have so lost contact with that. And I think the fear that we're seeing is because we've lost fear, we've lost contact with that. So it's like the child is afraid of the boogeyman in the dark. All you need to do is go out and see the stars and know that, that we are part of an infinite whole. Because we become, become so isolated, even more so during the pandemic, we've been allowed to fester, some of us, have festered in our fears and we have to figure out a way if we're going to elevate all of humanity we have to reconnect to that sense of whole that reconnect to that sense of responsibility i mean one of the areas that i've worked in for 30 years is climate change why can't we get that why can't we make that connection so i think there's an inherent responsibility to elevate and i you know it's it's why i love your work so much because it makes makes us realize and series work is just so magical it so makes you pause and that's that piece between the in-breath and the out-breath and that's where mm -hmm. that level four if you want to call it it's not pausing we have mm -hmm. to reconnect we have to if we're going to elevate all of humanity then we have to do that but you know i think apart from what you see on the media i think we're actually doing pretty well you know so lots, lots of people are, are waking up at the moment and but, but these levels by the way i don't mean them in any kind of elitist way they're just a, a way of a way of being and there's nothing yes. there's nothing to stop me operating at level four for five minutes if i lose my rag or something like that. You know, we can all we can we, we bounce up and down the levels all of, all of the time uh but we are doing remarkably well i think we are going to see in this century where we we stop being planetary abusers and we become planetary uh caretakers and mm. the key is the children is all the people you're teaching it's this i was speaking to a, a very imaginative uh inventive child only this morning wasn't i siri your, your son yes, yes and, you were. and and so our job is to hold their hands get them through their education the best they can 
and pop them out there and they will make the change and their children will make the change as well. And mm. uh, the last uh, guided meditation uh, for insertions is called the children of infinity. Mm. So every child is infinite. And as we were discussing on this morning, we're also made of nothing. You know, there's nothing in us. The, the atoms that we <laughs> are mostly nothing, which is kind of interesting. But in there is the, is the potential too, which is just absolutely amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have five children, so I absolutely have a future in my hands when I hold them. So yeah. it's very fascinating and uh, if we level up all with them and then for them and with them, it's going to change very well for all of us, I think. Hmm. Indeed. Uh, just to say hi to Heather Hoskinson that's just uh, just joined us on the, the chat. Hmm. Yeah, so, I'm, yeah. I'm with you, Siri. I got involved in environmental stuff when my first child was born. So how do you create a safe environment for your child? You know, how do you... You know, how do you nurture them? How do you care for them physically? How do you ensure your house is safe? How do you ensure your yeah. your yard is safe? How do, in my case, it was a nuclear power plant not far away. So mm. you start looking at the bigger picture. And it is, yeah. it, so the, the, the birth of, of my ecological self was about childhood, but I was fortunate enough to go to the Air Summit in Rio in 92. And I came home and I was unable to drive my vehicle. I was unable to shop. Um, and I realized the idea that no child is safe unless every child is safe. Mm -hmm. And I, that can be extrapolated to the planet. We're all in the same biosphere. There's no getting off, right? No, I don't like what you're doing. I'm just going to go to another world. That doesn't work, right? So it's this, this sacred responsibility that we have to children. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it goes both ways. You know, we, um, we look after the earth. The earth will look after us. Mm. And right. also, I think, and I know, and I feel that uh, having five children, it, it gives us a new perspective on everything that has to do with the env environmental caretaking. And they have taught us so much about what they see in the future. And it's uh, pivotal that we keep the leveling up for ourselves so that we don't take their hope away. And they have taught us a lot of things about how they want us to take care of the planet. So... I'm with you both. <laughs> yeah, and, and don't forget, if we reincarnate, we want to come back anyway, and uh, we want to leave it in a good place for when we come back. Not that yeah, not, yeah. not that reincarnation is necessarily linear. Absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. fantastic stuff. So, um, let me just ask you both, in terms of your personal cycles, where you've got to, because there's uh, Suzanne, you're writing a book, Siri, you've got this new project on the Arcana, and what have you. Where do you suspect and hope and dream? your cycles will go next mm, that's a very good question <laughs> because what I you, what, so for you in, in the case of your artwork siri yeah. and bringing it together in this massive part work you know mm -hmm. taking a massive thing on which is the all the wisdom of the uh, major and minor arcanas what mm. do you what would you wish that that could do for the planet oh i wish that uh, that could also awaken uh, people, uh, the population of Earth, so that they see that the magic that we all inherited and the, we have in us can be put in the right place. So in my arcana or our arcana, the, the motifs are women. So being a woman, it's very empowering. And I, I, I feel that when you get to see this, Suzanne, your comments will be blowing up. <laughs> <laughs> and, and your energy will also be, be infected in some positive way, I hope. And the, the goal for me is to show that uh, different is actually good. We were discussing the, the illustrations that I made, the eight first of them for the Minor Arcan, which is very fun because I tend to get in the place of an energy of nine with all the dimensions and all my art, as you say, all my art and all my wisdom and everything that I have done so far is get, getting put into each and every illustration, which is very interesting. So all that I know and have been through and see in the future will be put into these cards. And also the energy will be framed with, with, a, with a border around it. So you can, like all tarot decks, you can 
use them for your own good and for your future and for your family and everything. That's that's my hope for everything. Well, that's a lovely hijacking of the arcana, isn't it? Because most uh, mm -hmm. most of the tarot has been in the hands primarily of the design of it by by men. Some mm -hmm. great female illustrators in the past. They did the Rider Waite deck was illustrated by a woman, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously, and and we have this idea that most readers of the tarot are are female, but the engineers of the tarot have been primarily male. And I've always seen the um, the tarot and Kabbalah being a, a male magic. You know, mm -hmm. which I combine with the female magic of the Kryon school in, in Germany. So it's great that you've hijacked this and you've you've put the female brand on it very firmly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all for change. So my number is five, by the way, and that is all about changing things and discovering yeah. patterns. And no, let me do this this way and you'll follow. So I, I hope to start a snowball and just push, push it over the hill. <laughs> What you just said really resonates with me, Sir, the idea of taking the body of your work and putting it in and, and mm. yeah, the idea of taking the, the incredible gift and you bring to your work and, and giving it meaning and bringing all the meanings in. So um, I think that's pretty much an answer to your question, Tom. I think that, but that's what I see for myself as well, is to take this, this, this sea of knowledge that I've accumulated and somehow package it in such a way that it makes it both visible and inspiring for others so you're writing yeah. this memoir at the moment and is that almost like a, a, a summation then of this knowledge but in a chronological kind of form i think so um it's it's still in a defining process i'm still you know gathering sort of pieces of it um mm. it's it's how, how I got to now, I guess, is the best way to describe it. And then the insights from that, I'm hoping um, that that will come out of it, is I, I, have, I have three uh, children. Um, and uh, the, the middle child was always very, very wise. And he, he's, he was the one who was always helped me kind of encapsulate knowledge and figure it out. And when he was three or four, Three, I think three years old, he told us once that he knew what the last number was. And we said, okay, we'll bite, what is it? He said, well, it's zero. It all comes back around to the beginning again. Wow. Which was pretty insightful for a three-year-old. Mm -hmm. But the idea of, you know, he didn't want to turn three because why would he want to be three when he was perfectly happy being two? Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, yeah, so this idea of encapsulating it and bringing back and Elevating at this again, you know the elevation that we we literally if I've the old expression of I've seen farther It's because I've stood on the shoulders of giants. So what is it? What is my piece that I need to pass on so that my children and my children's children and my children's children's children? Um, don't have to do all the hard work. I mean Peter um, Was the child who would always learn you know if you say you shouldn't do that because you'll burn yourself. He'd say, well, that's a good piece of knowledge. I'm going to carry that forward. Whereas as my firstborn was like, well, let me see how much it hurts and would touch it anyway. Right. So this idea that we have a collective and an ability to elevate and nurture and not, um, not abuse what we've learned, but actually use it to help the collective. I think that's, that's my goal. Wow. Now, while you, I wasn't uh, doing, I wasn't multitasking, and I was actually doing a bit of online research while you were speaking. I just went to Amazon and typed in on books. Has anyone written a book called How I Got to Now? And they haven't. That's a great title. Susanna. That's a really, really good title. Mm. How Is I it How I Got or How We Got? Well, there's one, one here by Steve, Stephen Johnson called How We Got to Now, Six Innovations That Made the Modern World. There's another one here called How I Got Rid of Me. That's a, that's a song. No one's actually written How I Got to Now. So it's yours, Suzanne. Mm -hmm. Take it. Okay. All right. Take it. So I would, by the way, I would highly recommend How We Got to Now. It is oh, it's fine. staggering book. Oh, that one um, by Stephen Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable because it, it shows you how one tiny little thing has changed the world. Um, a, a guy going to North Carolina in the 18th century wanted an ice cube, developed, you know, ice houses, developed, 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 which led to 
air conditioning, which led to the population of most of the southwestern United States because places like Las Vegas, San Rio, and even Los Angeles were uninhabitable without air conditioning. And how that's changed. We've literally changed the world because one guy wanted a cold drink. Wow, but this is amazing because how you know, I was on Amazon and I only found the the book that's got a similar title that you've already read. How do you not find coincidences are just coming along big time at the moment? All these synchronicities and and all yeah. these threads are coming together. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And this Energy. is the point of the night, isn't it? This is the it's the completion, but also the start of everything. Yeah. 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 As Peter would say, it all comes back around to the beginning again, Tom. It does, doesn't it? But, but but with a spiral up, that's the difference, mm. right? Yeah. And it possibly yeah, can it spiral is. down, of course. But that's when it all goes very very pear shaped. So, yeah, the spiraling up, and, uh, and this is the point of the being nine 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 meditation, which we shall find on Insight Timer. Is it's all about getting to the next level of vibration just by turning. The, I, I get people into the nine nine six energy, which is where most society is at the moment. We just take that final six and turn it into a nine. And then we've got beings of nine, nine, nine on the earth plane. And uh, and heaven is brought down to earth. Hmm. There you go. Fantastic. Hmm. So, yeah, so I'll, I'll give you a sneak preview of levels 10, 11, and 12, shall I? Yes, please. Yes, so please. Level 10, in insertion 10, um, what I did, and again, I didn't have a plan for that, it, it just came in. I um, modeled it on the moon of Io, and Io looks like a 10, doesn't it? And what I did, I gave Jupiter, now all planets and stars are, have got consciousness, so we might not recognize it, but I gave, I made Jupiter a very special intelligent planet. In fiction, it's not real, but it could be. And I made Io its 10th intelligence. And in uh, meditation number seven and ambient track number seven, they were all about our super senses, how we open up um, to what's called the unified chakra point. And so in level, when you get to level 10, your super senses gain a super sense. Right? Hmm. That's what, so, so you become even super sensitive. So super sensibility is like a, a sense which is beyond our classic five senses of, uh, of sight, uh, hearing, touch, uh, smell and, and taste. Um, so super senses is, is, is the, and, and those ones are all, they're all input into us. So we see things. We don't emit light from our eyes. We just get, take light in and we see things with the super senses, you know, the, the, the other chakra points, they're bi-directional portals. So when you get to level 10, what happens is your super senses gain a super sense, which is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Level 11, if you think about the insertion 11, which is all about L blend, uh, is about us tapping into the elemental forces. It's all about tapping into the the underworld, if you know what I mean. And then level twelve is actually getting to a point where you're uh, what you call an avatar on the earth plane. So it's a it's a descended soul. So your soul completely uh, incarnates into your body. So it's not just a, a thing that's attached and guiding you. It's, it's actually in in your body. Now level thirteen though. Level thirteen is in the set in the center of a dodecahedron, right? And so, it, as as all the numbers on a dodecahedron dice, dice opposite numbers add up to thirteen, the center is imbued with the essence of of um, of thirteen, and, mm. and that's a new state of matter, which is kind of interesting. And I think it's a condensed soul wave, so it's soul waves uh, incarnated and densified mm. but i don't know what it don't don't necessarily know what it does yet but we'll find out in a few months time so that's what's okay. going to happen on this uh, channel we'll be exploring 10 11 and 12 over the next uh, few months suzanne now is this going to be a regular appearance for you love to fantastic this should be good <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh any other thoughts before we uh, we wind up I have a little detail that I want to share with you because oh. I, you know, I painted an octopus uh, and it's Octavius from your book, yeah. Tom. And actually, I discovered after finishing him, he has got nine arms, nine tentacles. Uh -huh. And so he is, he must be a part of your book series. <laughs> Indeed. Well, funny enough, yeah, I've just been writing about um, 
This is what's lovely about this book. I wrote this this blog that just went live yesterday called Plotting and Pantsing. I've never heard of plotting and pantsing. And me neither. What it what it means is a plot is when you've got a plot for your book and then you mm -hmm. you roll forward and you write to that plot. When you pants it, you just write it by the seat of your pants. And I'm a I joined this forum called the Bestseller Academy some time ago, uh, um, and just to try and learn some new techniques about writing and also marketing and what have you. And I saw they were talking about it as, is it an either or? So you either plot or you pants. And I realized that I do both, but I just do them in different proportions. So in Soul Waves, it was very, very much plotted. This is on the blog, by the way. If you go into my blog, I'll put the website up there. Uh, if you go to tomevans.co, you'll find the, the blog uh, there. Pantsing is when you go out of the seat of your pants. So Soul Waves was, 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 was plotted with a little bit of pantsing right at the end because I didn't know what the end was going to be until I got to it. Uh, insertions was very much plotted in terms of its structure and then i had plots for some of the stories but not for not for seven eight nine or ten they all came out of nowhere which is kind of interesting and then duodex because it's so wild mm. i've got list the tiniest bit of plots so and maybe 25 percent plot and 75 percent seat of your pants stuff but i know in there because I've already telegraphed it in there that the, the, the 13th state is going to be revealed in Duodex. And I think I feel more comfortable writing about it in fiction rather than trying to encapsulate it in nonfiction. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, I think the nonfiction will just re restrict what it is, but I'll reveal it in the book. But I, I'll be honest with you, I don't know what it is yet. So it'll, it'll just appear. Mm -hmm. It's great. Looking now, very much forward to that, reading that and hearing it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. So but hopefully, uh, Louise will be back with us there. Uh, next month as well hopefully i'll have a new yep. knee which should be great so i'm really stepping forward uh so uh, do pop over to um my website you can get links to uh get access to the soundwise archive where you've got all of these uh, meditations there's even three days three access now as well which is great uh, i know you're both you're both subscribers so thank you for that so if you want to get hold of siri you'll find her here at siriopoly.com uh, a great website here, wiseoldwoman.ca. Less of the old, please, Suzanne. And uh, hope to see you all next month. Enjoy the nice. orbit. Nice to see you. Take care. Thank you. Bye.